the nominee before before us is the former the immediate past minister of finance Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed and she is nominee for Kaduna Kaduna State On behalf of my colleagues, I want to welcome you to the Senate Chambers. And let me also repeat what I said when we had female nominees. This Senate is very gender sensitive. We want to encourage our female to contribute very well and very meaningfully to national development and therefore we are here for you, we will be there for you when you will be minister by the grace of God so that you operate optimally to the benefit of our dear motherland. We have your CV, but you are still at liberty to highlight and emphasize on anything that you feel the Senate needs to not for the purpose of this exercise. And where you have issues that are not reflected here and you feel very strongly about them, you can tell the Senate to take note. With this, once again, I want to welcome you to the Senate and you can address the Senate. Thank you. Senate Leader, Minority Leader, Distinguished yeah. Senators, please permit me to recognize especially the Senators, my Senators from Kaduna State, Senator Dr. Ubasani, representing Kaduna Central, Senator Suleiman Kwari, representing Kaduna North, Senator Andrew Mala, representing Kaduna South. Distinguished President, I also wear the hat of partly coming from Nasara State because my husband is from Nasara. So I want to especially also recognize the senators from Nasara. Distinguished senators, thank you very much for accommodating uh, my participation in this program today at this very late hour, I appreciate I want to thank Almighty Allah for the opportunity he has given me in life and also remember to thank my late father who has put me on the path that has brought me here today. But special thanks go to His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, for deeming it fit to have appointed me as a minister in the cabinet of 2015 to 2019 and also nominating me for the next cabinet. My name is Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed. I am a ministerial nominee representing Kaduna State. I was born on the 16th of June 1960, which means I'm 59 years old. I did my, prim my, uh, my primary school all in Kaduna, secondary school in Kaduna. I attended the Amadou Bello University's area and graduated in, nine, in 1981 with a BSc degree in accounting. I did my NYC in Kaduna with the firm of chartered accountants in 1981-1982. After my NYC, I was first employed by the Kaduna State Government in the Ministry of Finance. And two years after, I was now employed by the Nigerian Ex uh, External Telecommunications, formerly NET, now uh, uh, subsequently became uh, NITEL, as an accounting officer. I rose in NITEL from an accounting officer to deputy general manager in charge of corporate treasury. And in 2002, I was moved from NITEL to its subsidiary, the Mobile Telecommunications Limited, MTEL, where I was assigned first as uh, Deputy General Manager Finance 
and I rose to be the chief finance officer. I was the chief finance officer in Entel for five years. In 2019, the Kaduna State Governor appointed me to head the Kaduna Investment Company. As the managing director of Kaduna Investment Company, my responsibility was to steer the state towards the path of industrial development. After spending just one and a half years, the president appointed me, the then president appointed me to the board of the Nigerian EITI in August 2010. And subsequently, in November 2010, I was appointed as the executive secretary of the Nigerian EITI in AIT. I worked in AIT for five years. I met an organization that was in dire straits. We were facing the threat of being expelled from that body. Within five months, we were able to um, redirect the organization, achieve the requirements, the EITI compliance requirements, and also during my tenure, I was able to conduct four circles, uh, two circles of oil and gas industry audit covering a period of uh, six years, and then two circles of the solid minerals industry audit. We started the solid minerals, uh, uh, solid minerals industry audit covering a period of seven years. We also started the first of its kind, a statutory disbursement audit, which was also for another five-year period. In 2011, Nigeria was adjudged to be the best implementing country in the EITI. At that time, the EITI had 35 member countries. Having completed my, my tenure in November 2015, and also the president, while he was campaigning during that year, had made commitments to the electorate that he was going to reform the oil and gas industry and cited the, the reforms that are recommended in the NIT audit findings. I think, uh, Mr. President, that might be the reason why I was elected to be in the cabinet of President Muhammad Buhari. I was assigned as the Minister of State in the Ministry of Budget and National Planning. As a Minister of State working within the ministry, our function was to make sure that fly, plans are directly linked to budget so that spending is prioritized to meet the priorities of government. I was responsible for budget preparation, budget implementation, also monitoring and evaluation. We also prepare medium-term expenditure frameworks, a three-year plan that guides government uh, functions. While I was in the Ministry of Budget and National Planning, I was, appoint I was appointed to coordinate the donor activities in the country. So we were responsible for interfacing with donors as well as uh, in, for development projects as well as aid. I was also the minister that was responsible for coordinating the national social investment program. So we started from zero to 10 million beneficiaries by the time I left the Ministry of Budget and National Plan. I was appointed by the president to be the humanitarian uh, coordinator of the crisis in the Northeast. And that was a job that gave me a lot of satisfaction because I saw the result of the work leading in saving lives. In September 2018, last year, Mr. President, the President reassigned me from the Ministry of Budget and National Planning to head the Ministry of Finance. The mandate of the Ministry of Finance is to manage the resources of the country, so we're responsible for public financial management, for public policy, for tax policy, for setting tariffs, and in this process, we also are responsible for supervising the Nigerian Security Exchange. I supervise 12 agencies, including the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FRS, the Nigerian Customs Service, the Security and Exchange Commission, the NDIC. We also had a lot of work that we used to do together with the Central Bank of Nigeria. So the fiscal and the monetary authorities work together to agree both physical and monetary, and monetary policies. One of the main things that we identified when I assumed in the Ministry of Finance is that the country was suffering from low levels of revenue performance. As at the close of 2018, the average revenue performance was 55 percent, and therefore managing and funding the country's budget was a significant strain. So we therefore pulled together a process and formed an initiative that we called the Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative, 
It is meant for us to enhance revenue collection, but also to review and identify new sources of revenue, making sure that our people and our tools are optimally utilized. Our target is to move the revenue of the country from 55% to 85% by the year 2021. Mr. President, we also introduced the road tax, uh, road incentive tax credit scheme which was launched by Mr. President through an executive order. It's a program that invites the private sector to use their resources to build roads that is designed and approved by government. And we have started this scheme and launched it. In, uh, this program is now in 11 states, building about 800 kilometers of roads with about seven private companies as investors. When the investors spend their money to build the roads, they recover their funds, including cost of funds and profit through tax credit. We have worked out how the tax credit scheme will work. With the, pro, uh, the three major projects are already ongoing, and we already have demands for tax credits that currently the Federal Inland Revenue Service is working with. Mr. President, distinguished members, I also started Project Lighthouse in the Ministry of Finance. Project Lighthouse is a portal that brings together all data sources to enable us to analyze data relating to tax payments as well as uh, enabling us to take policy decisions that are, that are informed. This project is up and running. It is going to support ministries, departments, and agencies as well as states. So we're able to, using this data from the immigration, from FRS, from customs, from the banks, from different sources to pull them, we'll be able to track and identify uh, taxpayer information. This, Mr. President, is helping us to expand the tax base, which is very important in increasing the, the revenue performance. As of today, the uh, tax to GDP in our country is around 8%. Our target in the ERGP is to move this needle to about 15%. I know it's been a long day, and I want to um, ask the permission, Mr. President, to stop here at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Minority Leader. Thank you very much, President, sitting at the chair. Madam Nominee, thank you also very much being a mother for recognizing that it's been a long day. And therefore, it is my singular desire to state that this chamber, this Senate, is very gender sensitive. And being very gender sensitive, we have taken pains to ensure that each of the female nominees, who we have seen from their CVs, been extremely qualified to be ministers of the Federal Republic. And for you, haven't been double minister, being in the budget before you went to finance. We have every confidence that you will continue along the trajectory that you have started. And we wish you well. Thank you. Senate Leader. Uh, Mr. President, sitting in the chair, my distinguished colleagues, I rise to move in agreement with the position that has been adopted skillfully by the majority leader. Skillfully by the minority leader that this candidate, having been screened in 2015 by the same Senate and passed the tests of this Senate, and having secured the confidence of the president, like the majority leader said, 
for moving her from budget and planning to finance and returning her back again into the cabinet has demonstrated that Mr. President has immense confidence in her character and ability. With that, Mr. President, I move that the candidate should bow and leave the chamber. I so move, Mr. President. Is it the wish of the Senate that the nominee takes a bow and go? Yeah. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Take a bow.